Greetings, Pookie fans! Michael here, and as many of you most likely know, some Pokemon are just naturally very good in battle. They have great stats, or a great ability, or a great moveset, or a combination of all of those things and more. And then there are Pokemon that are all right. They're never gonna make a splash in the competitive scene, but they're good enough to be used on a playthrough team. But then there are some Pokemon that are just horrible. They have no redeeming qualities whatsoever in regards to battle prowess, and it is extremely difficult to find success using them against any Pokemon at a comparable level to theirs. So in today's video, I'm gonna be covering five Pokemon that you really should just never use. Yes, they can find success in certain specific situations, but those situations are so few and far between that the Pokemon end up virtually useless. All Pokemon on this list are ones that are not capable of evolving further. There are plenty of really freaking weak, not fully evolved Pokemon out there, but you can evolve them to make them stronger so they do have an eventual use. The ones I'm talking about are never gonna be good unless they get a new evolution in a later generation. This list is in no particular order, but I think the final two are definitely the worst ones of the bunch. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel so I can hit 1 million subs soon. And let's start with number one, Spinda. Not everything about Spinda is bad. It's got a pretty wide move pool with quite a few stab moves, and it's got a pretty useful hidden ability in Contrary. Well, it would be useful if it learned a move that dropped its own stats like Leaf Storm or Super Power so it could use the move and then boost its stats after using it. Now before I move on, I know there's gonna be someone out there who says in the comments, actually Spinda can learn Super Power and I should address that because you were once correct. Spinda could learn Super Power, but it can't anymore. The only way to get a Spinda knowing the move superpower is from the Dream World, a service that is no longer available. And that move cannot be passed down by breeding, so it is literally impossible to generate a new Spinda with superpower in any main series game without hacking it. So the only way to get one now is to be traded one by someone who got one years ago. So as a result, Spinda effectively does not get any self stat dropping move. So the only real way you can make use of contrary is in a double battle and have a partner Pokemon drop slash boost its stats. But even if you do come up with some fun strategy involving contrary Spinda, you're still gonna have a lot of trouble getting anywhere with it because its stats are horrible. It's got a base stat total of only 360 having 60 in every base stat across the board. This is one of the lowest base stat totals for a Pokemon that can't evolve in the entire game. Freaking Magby has a higher base stat total and it's a baby Pokemon. So while none of its stats are completely god awful terrible, they're all bad. So instead of being really atrocious at some things, but maybe kind of good at other things, it's just severely mediocre at everything. Also, it's typing doesn't help it either because normal is not super effective on any type. So Spinda can't get super effective stab moves on anything. So while you might be able to get away with using a Spinda on a playthrough team, because you certainly won't get away with it in competitive, it's gonna be really hard. And to me, that doesn't sound fun. So it's best if you just don't use Spinda. Before we move on to the next entry, I'd like to take a quick minute to thank the sponsor for this video, Harry's. I shave several times a week to preserve my boyish good looks, but it's rarely a pleasant experience because I end up accidentally cutting myself and generally irritating my skin, and it's just expensive to have to do it. But then came Harry's. The founders, Jeff and Andy, got tired of low quality, expensive razors, so six years ago, they founded Harry's in order to provide high quality, reasonably priced razors directly to men all over the world. Harry's sent me their starter set, which includes the weighted handle with textured rubber grip, one five blade cartridge, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover to protect your blades when you're on the move. I really like their stuff because it's high quality and reasonably priced, and it all comes right to your front door. The deal Harry's has on their trial set right now is amazing. It's a $13 value, but right now you can get it for only $3 if you head to harrys.com slash mnjtv linked in the description below. 
You'll be supporting my channel and also improving your own shaving experience by a mile. Thanks again to Harry's for sponsoring this video, but now onto the next entry, another Pokemon that you really should never use because its stats are just terrible. That being number two, Delibird. I hate Delibird. But it's not just here because I hate it. The reason I hate it is because it has a very low catch rate and therefore is very annoying to catch despite being so freaking weak and useless. But anyways, Delibird has a base stat total of 330, even lower than Spin does, and it's actually tied with Love Disk for the fourth lowest base stat total of all fully evolved Pokemon. Side note, Love Disk would be an entry on this list if this list was six Pokemon long and not five. If you're curious about the fully evolved Pokemon that have lower base stat totals than Delibird and Love Disk, third place is Ditto, which can become useful by transforming into stronger Pokemon. The second is Smeargle, which has found use in the past due to its virtually limitless move pool. And the first is Shedinja, which is the lowest because its base HP stat is literally only one. However, it can still be useful because if the opponent doesn't have a super effective move, they literally cannot harm Shedinja with a direct attack. Meanwhile, Shedinja can strike back with its reasonably solid base 90 physical attack. So while Shedinja's not amazing, I certainly wouldn't classify it as useless. But back to Delibird, its stats are just awful. Its speed could be considered okay at best, but its special attack, its best attacking stat, just isn't good. The rest of its stats are simply atrocious, resulting in Delibird being easily KO'd by all sorts of attacks, even ones it resists. In addition to that, Delibird basically only has two abilities, despite having two regular abilities and a hidden ability. That's because its regular ability, one of them, is Vital Spirit, which prevents sleep. And its hidden ability is Insomnia, which prevents sleep. These abilities are completely identical other than Vital Spirit making high level Pokemon more likely to show up in the wild, but that doesn't matter in battle. In battle, they are the same. So Delibird basically has a completely useless hidden ability when they could have given it one that would have actually helped it rather than do literally nothing. To conclude this entry, I would like to read you a piece of literature. That being the generation five Smogon entry, for Delibird. One of the worst things about Christmas has to be the mall Santas. Every year, these vapid tokens of an overly commercialized holiday pop up all over like clockwork, intending to spread joy and cheer, but doing nothing but delivering lackadaisical performances and disappointment. Many a kid's holidays have been spoiled by these mundane avatars of Kris Kringle in what can only be described as a ritualistic assassination of childhood innocence. Truly, they are a blight upon our cultural landscape, and only when they are washed from our social consciousness can some form of dignity begin to return to Christmas. Everything stated in the above paragraph also applies to Delibird. Next up is a Pokemon that can maybe be useful in certain situations, but in the end, I don't really recommend it. That being number three, Pukumuku. The reason I don't really recommend it is because it gets no attacking moves. Literally none. First off, let's look at its stats. It's got a base stat total of 410, which is kind of mediocre, and the spread clearly indicates that this Pokemon is intended for a support or stall role. Its defenses are excellent, but everything else is terrible, especially its speed, which is tied with Shuckle and Munchlax for the lowest base speed stat in the entire game. But then you look at Pukumuku's move set, and the only moves in all of its move set that are not status category moves are Counter and Mirror Coat, which I honestly think should be considered status moves because they are not direct attacks that can hit at any time. Every other move that Pukumuku has is some kind of support or setup move. That means its only ways of doing damage to an enemy Pokemon are Toxic, Pain Split, Summoning Hail, getting lucky with a Mirror Coat or Counter Prediction, confusing the opponent by using Swagger, 
Dynamaxing and turning Counter and Mirror Coat into Max Knuckle or Mind Storm, or by fainting and doing damage with innards out. So while it is possible to use stall tactics to maybe get a win in a single battle situation, it's really difficult to do so. In Gen 7, Pukumuku had Block, which it could use to prevent the enemy Pokemon from switching out, but in Gen 8, it doesn't have that anymore, which really hurts it. You also can't Toxic Stall a Pokemon that can't be poisoned, and Dynamaxing it in order to use Max Knuckle or Max Mindstorm would waste your Dynamax because of Pukumuku's terrible attacking stats. And God forbid your opponent knows Taunt, because if that happens, Pukumuku is literally completely useless. It does get Baton Pass, so it could use that to pass off boosts to another Pokemon, but the only moves that it knows that can be Baton Passed are Substitute and Curse which really limits the pool of Pokemon that would appreciate that. Maybe it could find use as a supporting type Pokemon in a double battle situation, but I don't recommend it because if it goes down, it literally cannot touch your enemy Pokemon, and there are way better support Pokemon out there that can actually pack a punch if they need to. While you could probably make Pukumuku work as a playthrough Pokemon, each and every battle would take you eons, which just sounds miserable. So I personally don't recommend using Pukumuku other than in extremely specific situations. All right, so that wraps up the first three Pokemon, which I definitely think you should not use, but these next two are substantially worse. The first of them is number four, Unknown. Like most of the Pokemon discussed in this video, Unknown has a terrible base stat total of only 336. Most of its stats are an absolutely pitiful base 48, but its physical attack and special attack are a somewhat better 72, which isn't horrible, but is not good. The real stinker about Unknown is that it only gets one move, Hidden Power. Yes, you heard me correctly. That is literally the only move it can possibly learn. One, that's it. Obviously, that's terrible. Its only move is one that is only 60 base power and most of the time won't even end up being a stab attack. It can attack with a mediocre move or it can switch out. That is literally all unknown is capable of and even if it does want to attack, chances are high it will be outsped and KO'd before it even has the chance. It even has a useless stat too. Prior to the physical special split in Generation 4, Unknown had to have equal physical and special attack because of Hidden Power's type variance. They wanted it to do the same damage no matter whether it was a physical type or a special type. But now that Hidden Power is always a special attack, all of those base points in Unknown's physical attack are literally completely useless because it literally can never use a physical attack. The only situation I can think of where using an unknown might be okay is if you have a hidden power psychic one and you're fighting a poison or fighting type gym leader and you toss on choice specs to make sure the damage it does is actually somewhat usable. But even then, if the opposing Pokemon has psychic type coverage and they outspeed you, your unknown's probably gonna die. Seriously, catch an unknown for the Pokedex in whatever game you're playing and maybe collect all the letters just for fun, but do not ever use it in battle. It will fail you. And the final Pokemon I'm discussing in this video is also my least favorite of all of the Pokemon in this video. That being number five, Wobbuffet. God, I hate this thing. I used to kinda like it because it's kinda funny in the anime, but now, after what it's done to me, I hate it. Wobbuffet has a base stat total of 405. Every stat is terrible, except it's HP, which is actually phenomenal. Based on stats alone, it looks like it might be able to fill a decent support role, but then you look at its move set and realize that this thing is a steaming pile of crap. As of generation eight, Wobbuffet only gets access to eight different moves. Splash, Charm, Encore, Amnesia, Counter, Mirror Coat, Safeguard, and Destiny Bond. There you go. That's it. 
That is the entire move pool. Yes, it's still more than unknown, but at least unknown gets a direct attack. That means your only ways of harming an enemy Pokemon are one, Destiny Bond, where you predict it and use it at the exact right moment, and then they KO you, and therefore you KO it in return, which I think would still result in a loss of the battle. Alternatively, you could predict a physical or special move correctly, and then use counter or mirror coat, and then take enough damage to be able to do back a lot to them, but not so much damage that you get KO'd. That means your only way to harm an enemy Pokemon is for your Wobbuffet to be harmed itself, which is awful. Okay, actually, you can do direct attack damage via the use of Max Knuckle or Max Mindstorm if you Dynamax your Wobbuffet. However, remember that Wobbuffet's base attacking stats are an abysmal 33. So even with a stab super effective Max Mindstorm, you're not doing very much damage. Wobbuffet is such a bad Pokemon that when Madry Bread did his playthrough challenge of trying to beat Emerald with only a Wobbuffet, he couldn't beat it. He wasn't able to beat it with just the Wobbuffet because he had no way to account for Ludicolo's Leech Seed against Wallace. To my knowledge, this is the only playthrough challenge he's done that he wasn't able to beat. I haven't seen all of them, but I've seen a lot of them and he's beat all the other ones I've watched. That is why I hate Wobbuffet so much. It is completely useless if it's on your team, both if it's your Pokemon or if it's your partner in a raid battle. Looking at you, Alfie, you deadweight loss causing buffoon. But if you're fighting against it, it's a nightmare. On too many occasions, I have encountered a Why Not or a Wobbuffet in a Nuzlocke. That means I can't flee from it because of its Shadow Tag ability, so I'm forced to KO it by chipping it down little by little so its Counter or Mirror Coat can't do too much damage to me, but I also have to make sure that when I KO it, it doesn't use Destiny Bond. It's horrible and it has resulted in the deaths of many of my Pokemon because I happen to get a crit that doesn't knock it out. It is vile. Also, another bad thing about Wobbuffet, it has one of the dumbest gender differences of all time. Oh, we wanna show that this wild animal is female? Let's give it human lipstick because that makes sense and is creative and not freaking stupid. I'm being sarcastic, it's extremely stupid. Okay, sorry, went on a bit of a tangent there, but seriously, Wobbuffet has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. Yes, Shadow Tag is an amazing ability, but Wobbuffet can't really make use of it because it can't punish the Pokemon it traps since it can't reliably do damage to them. It's not even useful against roaming legendaries because your Wobbuffet can't reliably damage them without running the risk of killing them. Just don't ever use a Wobbuffet. Get it for your Pokedex and toss it in your box because it has no use to you other than comedic relief on a TV show. Thank you so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support me in a way independent of the fluctuating YouTube ad revenue, which is at its lowest in January. So if you wanna support me in the same way and get some cool perks like early videos without ads in exchange, the link is in the description below. Also, if you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend this video here. And don't forget to check out Harry's. Thanks again to them for sponsoring. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all!